So, my name is Ken Wall. I'm going to reveal to you the mysterious community that controls what goes viral on the internet. So, when you think viral, the first thing you think of is large ad campaigns or funny videos, right? So, you got the old Spice guy, you have, you know, Charlie the Unicorn from YouTube, and of course the infamous Star Wars kid. But the thing about viral is it's one of those industry terms, right? It's very ambiguous. It's, it's hard to define. It's hard to strategically plan. It's even harder to strategically execute. But I'm here to tell you that viral is not the case because there's a mysterious group out there that can control up to 50% of what goes viral on the Internet. Now, the group isn't ran by anyone. It's not, it's not in charge by the, the godfather here or Skull and Bones or definitely not Julia Senge and WikiLeaks because, well, if it was, I, I sure as hell wouldn't be up here talking about it. But I like to think of it more as the Fight Club minus the violence. And the reason why is because in Fight Club, it's people from all different backgrounds and all different places coming together for their own motives and reasons, but one purpose. And that, in our community, is to make things go viral. So we have the social media expert getting paid to make things go viral. We have the blogger who wants something on his site to go viral. We have the college kid who's doing it because it's fun and challenging. And then, of course, we have big media because if something goes viral, more eyes, and more eyes are more bucks. So how's it work? Well, let's go to that scene from Wall Street where Gordon Gecko wants a stock to go up, right? What's he do? First thing he does, he wants to create a spark. So he gets up on the phone. He calls everybody that he knows in the stock market, all the big players. And what they're trying to do is create a viral effect, that domino effect. But the reason why he can do it, one of the biggest points from that movie, is because it's not what he knows, it's who he knows, right? And that's the exact same thing with the viral community. So the way it works, somebody in the viral community has a piece of content, and for whatever reason or motive, they want it to go viral. So what do they do? They sub it to submit this content to something like Reddit or StumbleUpon or Dig. And then they, they, they get into a group where we all hang out, this, a private group, and clearly it's all blacked out because this is, this is high classified information. And, and, we all, and, and they say, hey, check this out. You think this can go viral? And we all say, we watch it, and we think, you know what, I think it's good. So together, here's another Twitter group that's private. We, we try to push it to one of these front pages of Reddit or Dig or spread it through StumbleUpon. And the reason why is because if it hits those front pages, it's going to be seen by millions of people. And those people are going to post it on Facebook. They're going to post it on Twitter. They're going to put it on their blogs. And if the content's really good, the viral effect will keep spinning and be picked up by Yahoo, AOL, and CNN. So let's talk about what kind of content can go viral. Well, there's the discovery or there's the intended. So here's the perfect example of discovery. Mr. Antoine Dotson, genius, right? Says something funny on local news. Someone in the viral community sees it, submits it to Reddit, sends it out to all of us. We all see it in the Google group, laugh our ass off, and we decide we're going to try to push it to the front page of Reddit. Next thing you know, it hits the front page of Reddit. The viral effect goes on, and overnight, Antoine Dotson becomes an internet superstar. Now let's talk about intended content. Here's a perfect example, Toyota, the swagger wagon. They want something to go viral. They produce a video with two parents rapping about their minivan. So they know the value of something going viral, so they tap someone in the viral community make this go viral. He submits it to Dig. He sends it out to us in the Twitter group or the Skype private group. We all try to push it. It hits the front page. Boom, viral effect happens, and next thing you know, Toyota has themselves a hit, and they're paying money for national TV advertising. So I want you to think now, when you see something viral on the Internet, ask yourself who. Who created this content? Who's reaping the benefits, right? What, 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 what's the reasoning, and why? Why are they doing it? Because in the examples I showed you, it's, a little, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's transparent. Dotson was a discovery. Toyota wanted to go viral. But a lot of times what goes viral is not as easy to decipher. Sometimes they're trying to sell you something and you don't even know. It's all planned. Good example is Rebecca Black and Friday. Did she, was that a plant? Did somebody want her to go viral or is that really an accident? So the last question I want to leave you guys with and ask you is how do you think I got so many votes, so many damn votes to be able to come up here and speak at Ignite? With that said, my name is Ken Wool. Thank you very much. Go Red Wings.